Hey, what's up? So good to see you. Man, racism and hate still here? It's all right, because so is love and goodness. And love will always win. I was in this group uh, chat uh, a while ago, a video conference call, and my good friend Wayne, who's an older white guy, shared how he felt, and it was deep, it was heartfelt. You can tell he was definitely moved by it. So I want to share this conversation with him. The real cool thing about him, you know Wayne Fight helped develop and bring high-speed internet into the homes? He was part of the team that helped develop ADSL from its infancy to mass production. I don't even know what all that means. I just know I got Netflix at home. Racial tension is high. Like, yeah. I'm 38 years old, and I've never seen it this intense. Like, there's always been conversations and things happen, but I've never yeah. felt it where it's on a national level, local level, and many people on a personal level are processing, dealing with it, reacting. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I just feel like, uh, you know, uh, God is using this time. Uh, to reveal what's been hidden for so long mm. and bringing things out into the open that are painful mm. for a lot of people. And uh, I pray that, uh, that I can be humble and listen to the pain wow. and even listen to the anger without correcting or rebuking or anything like that, but, but really taking the time to try to understand and empathize um, what's, you know, with people and what's happened to them in their past and the traumas that they've had to go through. Mm -hmm. I felt myself begin to drift towards mistrust of police officers, even some hatred towards a certain population and demographic of American people. Yeah. But a lot of things helped me to cling to what is good. And I yeah. thought about people like you, and especially when I heard you share your heart, it reminded me that, my goodness, Lawrence, there are people out there that do care. There are people out there that do love deeper and want to love. And so, yeah, yeah so yeah. you're one of those guys that helped me. Yeah, well, I appreciate that so much. You know, I think when we listen to the news, um, we can really be jaded because, uh, the news is, uh, you know, it's important for us to hear the news and understand some of the things that are going on in the world. But um, most of the news is centered around bad news. And there's a lot of good things that are going on that aren't covered in the news. Yeah. There's a lot of good conversations that we're having, um, you know, heart to heart conversations. There's, uh, there's just a, um, a greater understanding of one another because of this. And, you know, for me, I always, I always think that uh, if we just allow ourselves to kind of drift uh, where we would go naturally, we would naturally separate ourselves. Mm -hmm. We would naturally divide ourselves. We would naturally um, be, uh, you know, in uh, our own small little group. Yeah. Of people that look like us. And it takes an intentional uh, energy and time and uh, self sacrifice and uh, a selflessness that we learn from God to want to share our time with other people that aren't in our little group. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I think. Uh, that's that's something that I need to repent of. I need to uh, really make more efforts yeah. to, to really uh, broaden my palette of my friends. Mm. <laughs> well, I like how you said that. But I'm yeah. gonna give people a little context. Like people don't know, Wayne. You're a prof you're a professional engineer. You've been doing that for over 20 years. Uh, almost 40. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so a long time. You're yeah. 
established professional and you work some some big companies and it's cool because your son's following your footsteps as an engineer as well so it's that's really cool yeah um man you've been active in a church for many years as long as i've known you you've been involved in pads and pads is a, a chicago organization that feeds and takes care of the homeless i've been in chicago for six seven years now and as long as i've been here you've been doing it consistently i haven't i gotta admit that but mm -hmm. you've been like consistently engaged so we're talking to a, a a man that is busy with his job we're talking to a man who is already very active in his community through the church young teens pads the homeless and you're telling me there's still more room to grow more room for you to give yourself like help me understand that like Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I just think, uh, I think every day we get opportunities. And I, I think uh, many, many times we fail to take those opportunities. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, uh, there's, there's so many opportunities to, to, um, to give, even if it's just giving a little bit of time. What type of pain have you felt? And you know, how are you processing this on a, on a personal level? I'm always afraid that I'm not exactly going to say the right things. Um, so I apologize in advance. But, you know, when I was a young teen, when I was in seventh and eighth grade, I was regularly bullied mm -hmm. by some kids. Uh, and, and that's a very common thing in, in that age era, to be bullied especially in my era. Um, and those are scars that stay with me to, even to today. Mm -hmm. so, so in a small way, I can feel like I can empathize a little bit, but I also realize that people that go through racial injustice, you know, it's like being bullied every day wow. for your whole life and going through these scars. And, and uh, I just, you know, I just can realize that that it's so um, it's so traumatic. It is a trauma that God can heal, and you know, with God's love and and power, people can realize how loved they are, mm -hmm. regardless of how they're treated. And it's because of you know because of our Lord that we can realize how loved you are regardless of what anybody says or how anybody treats you. And to me, that's an incredible power that, uh, that, and a blessing that God has, has given us to, so that we can know his love for us. Wow, no way, I, I, I really wanna thank you first all for sharing about your personal life there. I, I never knew that, because um, I know you were a stud, you know, you were a gymnast in high school, and you told me some other stories I won't mention here about what you used to do in high school. I was like, man, you're such a stud. So to share that in a very vulnerable place and to be very real, like, hit home for me, but then also to be able to, like, you're able to connect, maybe not fully understand, but empathize. Like, hey, I know what it feels like yeah. to be oppressed every day, to be, mm -hmm. in your words, to be bullied. And so I really appreciate you sharing that. What's your favorite story about Jesus or your favorite scripture that inspires you to love more and to give of yourself even more? Yeah, I mean, the, the Bible is so full of uh, scriptures that are so helpful um, that can impact my heart, even after reading it for so long. Um, one of the scriptures is in Philippians chapter 2. Mm. Um, starting in, in verse 4 or verse 3, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, uh, consider others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Mm. And your relationships with one another have the same mindset mm. as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Mm. And, you know, I just think this opportunity to be like Christ is the most powerful thing that's ever happened in my life. Mm. I am so far from being like Christ, but every tiny step I make 
in that direction is so much power to be able to help the world, to help people around me, to stop being focused on myself, but to consider other people above myself. And I still have a long way to go to, to learn that lesson. There's many layers to that onion. Um, but if I can just unpeel one small layer, it's, it's power. There's so yeah. much power in it. Yeah. yeah. No, you know, thank you for sharing that scripture. I didn't even consider it as that, of that as one of the scriptures about love. But when you read it, it really hit home for me too. Like, wow, to be of the same mindset. Like, hey, don't feel what other people feel. Have empathy. Care about it. If they're struggling, yeah. hey, you struggle too. Like, you're in this together. So, Amen, Lawrence. I, I appreciate you so much uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, I, appreciate, I look forward to our partnership in the gospel. Yeah. And uh, and being able to stand together, stand firm against evil, yeah. and and to be a light to uh, to anyone that will let us shine it, shine it on them. <laughs> Absolutely, man. We'll do it together.